What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? We are live. It's 7 p.m. How's everybody doing? I'm hanging out here with my favorite mug. Mm. I am going to paste the links about everything that we're talking about in the comment section all right now. Give me two seconds to do this. Boom, boom. Boom, bing. There we go. Let me pin them to the top here. Pin comment. Bang. With the quickness. How's everybody doing? We're live. We are here to talk about the brand new video dropping this Friday at 9 a.m. I'm sure you guys heard me talking about it all week long. It feels like it's the only thing I've been talking about for a month. <clears throat> but uh, the time is finally here. This Friday, 9 a.m., I'm dropping a brand new video. As you guys know, I've been warning everybody. I've been giving everybody a disclaimer for the last few weeks. Um, let me just let my, let me, let me just keep, uh, let me ditch this hat. Um, I've been giving everybody the disclaimer for what feels like forever. I've been warning everyone. The new video that is dropping this Friday is completely different than anything I've ever released before. Um, I think a lot of people have just recently come around from fake woke and clown world and canceled and blah, 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 blah. And I think that a lot of people out there are under the assumption that all I do is controversial songs and all I do is this politically charged songs. Um, but the people who've been here from the beginning, the people who've been here since day one, um, you guys know that I'm capable of way more than that. And I make a lot of other different types of music. And this Friday, I'm releasing a type of music unlike anything that I have ever, 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 ever released before. Um, I cannot wait to show it to you guys. So Friday at 9 a.m., the video drops. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., the artwork drops. And I'm pretty sure when the artwork drops tomorrow, you guys are going to know what's up. And it's, it's a lot different for a lot of reasons. Um, it's not just the style of music, because the style of music is radically different than anything I've done. Um, but you'll see when the artwork drops tomorrow, I've never done what I'm about to do. You're going to see the artwork, and it's all going to click, and you're going to be like, oh my god. This is something that we've been asking for for a long time and it's finally done. So Friday, 9 a.m., brand new video. The artwork drops tomorrow at 9 a.m. So if you want to know what it's about, you want to know what the, what, the, what the song's called, you want to know all that, meet me here tomorrow at 9 a.m. As always, there are two ways to see the video before anybody else. They are join the Hangover Gang newsletter or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, the links to those things are pinned in the comments right now. All you have to do is click the link, enter your email to join the Hangover Gang newsletter, or click the link and hit OK uh, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So both of those links are in the comments. I've got them pinned. Um, so do one of those two things, or if you're feeling super generous, do both. Uh, a couple things about the Hangover Gang newsletter before I move on. Um, that's where I send all my free MP3 downloads. That's where I send early access to tour tickets. That's where I send promo codes for, for merch uh, from my store. Um, that's where all that stuff goes out. And you get early access to music videos there. So um, I would encourage you to join the Hangover Gang newsletter. And um, if you want to be a super homie, subscribe to my YouTube channel because we are at 1.96 million subscribers on YouTube. We're going to break 2 million, which is nuts. Um, like it took literally 10 years for me to break 1 million and it's taken us like six months uh, to get to 2 million. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty extreme rate uh, of improvement. Um, so subscribe to YouTube, join the Hangover Gang newsletter. New video 
the first of its kind, something unlike anything I've ever done before, drops Friday at 9 a.m. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm dropping the artwork, so meet me here if you wanna see that. Um, and aside from that, I'm gonna jump into the comments and start taking as many questions as possible. Um, I'm using Facebook like updated our pages. Um, and usually when I get into the live stream, the comment section is going crazy. And I'm sure that the comment section is going crazy right now, but it's not showing me everybody's comments. It's just, it, it's, it, it's showing a lot less uh, than I usually see. So if you guys have any questions at all, any questions, comments, things you want to talk about, things you want to know about, anything at all, drop it in the comments right now. I'm going to start scrolling through and answering as many of your questions and queries as humanly possible. And then of course, I'll get back to talking about new video Friday, subscribe to the newsletter, uh, join my YouTube channel, etc., etc. But um, I'm going to try and do a pretty healthy mix of answering questions and promoing the video. So let's get down to it. I'm just scrolling through here. Okay. Aaron Kent, Aaron Kent says, will you do a song about public school indoctrination? Um, dude, I don't know. That doesn't sound like a very exciting song to me, but I've definitely talked about it before, man. I've talked about uh, the curriculums and the education system and, um, uh, you know, turning, like, this is my thing about school, okay? I don't think that kids go to school. This is just generally speaking. Of course, there's people who go to school and, and do well in high school and graduate, and go to college and go to university and specialize in all these different fields. And they become really valuable members of society and they do really incredible things for us in the medical field or the judicial field or whatever. There's all these amazing people out there who go to school, take their skills and go on to do amazing things. But I personally feel like in general, I don't think school is trying to make geniuses out of anyone. And I don't, I don't really think that, that, that school is, its primary function is not to create outstanding, intelligent members of our community. I personally feel that, I think school's primary, primary function is teaching kids how to endure boredom. They just want to teach you how to endure boredom and take orders. Sit in your desk, shut up and don't talk to anybody, listen to me speak, do your work and go home. And I think that they teach, I, I think that's the way school works um, because they're preparing kids to sit behind desks for 12 hours a day and, and work nine to five jobs. So to me, like, that's what I think the primary function of school is. I think it is to, to teach children to endure boredom so that they can go on and contribute to uh, the, 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 you know, the low class workforce and pretty much just be enslaved by the system. And, and they teach you how to endure that and get used to that through schooling so that when you go end up swinging a hammer or pushing a pencil for 12 hours a day, um, you don't go crazy and burn the motherfucker down. <clears throat> okay, what else we got going on here? Jimmy Drake says, uh, why did you pick the name Hangover Gang? I mean, it's pretty simple, man. Like, it is self-explanatory. The name sort of answers the question. When I came up with Hangover Gang, I was just a raging alcoholic having the best time ever every night of my life. And I just wanted to have the best time ever as often as possible. And unfortunately for me, because it 
ended up resulting in a massive mental breakdown a few years ago. Unfortunately for me, uh, the best times and best nights that, that I was having back then were just like fueled by alcohol. Um, and we just ended up being hung over all the time. So it was just me and like two or three of my friends that were always going out and getting wasted together. And we were the hangover gang. And then as you guys know, I had like a massive mental breakdown a few years ago and I rehabbed myself and, 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 and got myself to where I'm at now. And I, I don't drink anymore. Um, and I don't really party. I just like work on music 24 seven. Um, and even though I don't drink anymore, Hangover Gang was always about having the best time of your life as often as possible. Given it was fueled by liquor at that point in time, it's not anymore, but I still feel like the, the, the purpose is the same. And that's just to have the best time of our lives as often as possible. And however you want to do that is up to you. And that is how Hangover Gang started. And that's what it means to me. Speaking of alcohol and being sober, it was St. Patrick's Day yesterday and I had this like funny idea where I was going to get like a St. Patrick's Day like green shirt and um, I was going to like try to drink all of these non-alcoholic drinks um, on, on in a video and just I thought it would be funny. So I bought like non-alcoholic whiskey and non-alcoholic vodka and non-alcoholic beer. And I was going to test it all in a video and then, you know, probably be disgusted and it would be pretty funny. And then St. Patrick's Day passed and I didn't get to do my non-alcoholic beverage tasting uh, because the, the, the non-alcoholic booze just showed up today, a day late. So now I'm stuck with like non-alcoholic whiskey, non-alcoholic rum, non-alcoholic vodka, non-alcoholic beer. And I don't know what, the, what I'm going to do with it now. Because I'm definitely not going to drink that just because. I don't know. Maybe I'll do the video at some point in time and it'll be a funny thing. Um, Sammy Joe says... Are you going to do a virtual concert uh, like you talked about at the beginning of the pandemic? You know what? I really do want to do a virtual concert. It's just the virtual concerts that I've seen people do, I was just really not enamored with. And I mean, you guys hear my music and you guys see my videos and I'm sure from that content you can tell how meticulous I am about the way things sound and the way things look. And I just haven't seen anybody's live virtual show yet that I was blown away by to the point where I was like, I want to do something like that. Um, so I don't know. I've been wrestling with it. I want to do it because I think it would be fun for all of us. Um, it'd probably be just like this, just be like a live stream with, with, with music. Um, so I might do it at some point in time. I just want to make sure that if I do it, I do it better than everybody else. And I haven't exactly figured out how to make that a reality yet. But as soon as I do, I'll, I'll do the live, the, the live concert. Uh, Christy Moore says, I have a question. Who is your favorite artist? And besides you and Nova's music, uh, let me just click see more. Uh, besides you and Nova's music, what do you listen to? Um, I primarily listen to classic rock. I listen to a lot of Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Steppenwolf, The Beatles, uh, Joe Cocker. Sometimes I listen to some Nirvana. The last few days while I've been working out, I've been listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers quite a bit. Um, I listen to a lot of Black Sabbath and Ozzy lately. I think Ozzy's new album is friggin' nuts. If you guys haven't heard Ozzy Osbourne's latest project, uh, he did a song called Under the Graveyard that's crazy. He did a song with Elton John called Old Ordinary Man, which is crazy. Um, so that's what I've been listening to lately, and that's what I listen to when I work out. Um, Nathan T-Bone Gregory says... How long have you been making music? I have been making music for probably about like 10 or 11 years now. Um, 
I, I, I sort of like, you guys know the story, but the Reader's Digest is I was a pro wrestler for a long time, like the WWF stuff. I got out of doing pro wrestling just because of politics within the business and accumulated injuries. I got out of pro wrestling. I needed a place to put my creativity. Um, and, and years prior to my pro wrestling career, this I had bought a Tupac CD at a pawn shop with my dad and I was just floored by it and fell in love with hip hop. And then shortly after that, a friend of mine introduced me to Eminem while we were riding on a yellow school bus on the way home from school. And um, I always wanted to rap and I always wanted to be a musician. Um, but it just never panned out like that. And then I got into pro wrestling and did the wrestling thing, da 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 The wrestling career came to an end. And I was like, damn, I need a place to put my creativity. I've been writing raps for forever. I've been writing poetry. I've been writing music forever. I'm going to be, I'm going to try my hand at this. Um, and then I started doing it. And like, like you guys know, man, like when, when I started making music, See, it's a difficult question to answer because when someone says, how long have you been making music? I think what Nathan's probably referring to is how long have I been making the music that I'm making now? And the music that I've been making now, the type of music I'm making now, I've been making for like three years. Prior to that, oh, that's a bad sign. You're not allowed to do that sign anymore. It's like, it's like a... First, it was like an Illuminati sign, and now it's become like a racist thing. So you're not, you're not allowed to say okay with your hand anymore. It's bad. Um, so I've been making the music I'm making now for three years. Prior to that, when I started out rapping and making music, I was making the same lame stuff that everybody else was making. Just talking about the girls and the cars and the clothes and the drugs and the alcohol and all that nonsense. Because, you know, I was a kid... And, and I didn't have my own story yet. So I just told everybody else's story. All my favorite rappers listening to what they were rapping about. I rapped about that stuff. Um, and, you know, I just was making music for the same reason that a lot of kids that age made music. Because they wanted to be the cool rapper guy. But now that I've grown up and I've had a few mental br breakdowns and I've been through some stuff. And I know what's important to me now and I know who's important to me and I know what I want to say to people and I know how I want to say it. Um, that old style of music that I was doing just kind of faded away when I had that mental breakdown because I found out what was important to me and what I wanted to do with my life. And the music I've been making for the last three years, that's what's important to me. And that's what I want to do with my life. So people ask me all the time, what's the, the best advice I can give uh, musicians who are just starting to rap or something? And, and, I, and I have a, 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 an answer that I normally give to people about being yourself and blah, 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 blah. This might even be better advice than that. So dear person who's just starting to be a musician and wants advice on being a rapper, if you want to be a musician, if you want to be a rapper because you want to be the cool rapper guy, don't fucking make music. Throw your laptop out the fucking window, stick your microphone up your ass, and go do something else. The world does not need any more cool guy rappers. It's done. There's too fucking many of them. The world needs people who are going to make music from their heart. The world needs people who are going to make music from their soul. The world needs people who make music to help themselves and make music that can help other people. That's what the world needs. We don't need any more cool guy rappers floating around. That's, that is my greatest advice. <sighs> Jeffrey Crothers says, hey, could you do an emotional song about your family one day? Absolutely. I think I have done a few emotional songs about my family. I did a song about my dog who passed away on one of my last, on my last mixtape, um, it's called Naz, and I was actually crying while I was recording that song. You can hear it. I almost never even put it out. I was gonna hide it on a project and not even give it a name or a number. Um, but then Naz came back to life miraculously, and I decided to put the song on my last album. Um, so I wrote that one. I wrote Sellout, which is a lot about me and my family and my girlfriend and stuff like that. But, and I wrote I Wish, um, which is a lot about me and my family. Um, but yeah, I got more on the way. And speaking of Naz, you guys want to see Naz? Oh, 
Oh, Nazi boy. Yo, this dog died and came back to life. How incredible is that? You've seen the other side, man. You've seen the other side, man. You're a zombie. So uh, this is the dog I wrote that song about. Um, anyways, if you guys want uh, autographed copies of my albums, you can go to www.hangovergang.com. That's also where all my t-shirts and sweatshirts, and mugs and blankets and blah, 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 blah. All my merch and my autographed albums are at www.hangovergang.com and the link is pinned in the comment section. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. My watch is talking to me. You want me to put you down? You're just happy here. Man, this dog is so obsessed with me. Like, I can't come in here and sit down and do a live stream without him. He has to come or he'll sit at the door and cry and cry and cry and cry. Um, he was just like a rescue off the street. He was just like abandoned by someone. And when we found him, his hair was like brown with dirt and he had dreads that were literally coming off of his body and dragging on the street. And then we just picked him up off the street one day and gave him a bath and cut his hair. And now he lives with me. Can't get rid of the fucking guy. You won't even, like, death couldn't even take this dog away from me. He came back from the dead. Anyway, that's Naz's story. What else we got going on in here? Uh, let me just flip down here and get some more questions. Oh, shiza. I just screwed up. One second. I flipped. I scrolled. Okay. Casey Varno says, do you believe in NA or AA? Do you work uh, to in a program to stay sober slash clean? I know everyone has their own ways of handling this. Um, yeah, sure. Like, I don't know how you could not believe in, for those of you that don't know, NA and AA are Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't know how somebody could not believe in NA or AA. I think those are both pretty amazing programs and I think they've helped millions of people uh, get sober and get clean, turn their lives around and um, I think they're great things. I'm not involved in a program like that. I, I never needed to be involved in a program to maintain sobriety or anything like that. Like, um, I cleaned up my shit and I stopped drinking and I got sober because I almost fucking died. Okay. So I had a massive mental breakdown and I almost died. I spent every day for nine months contemplating if I was going to kill myself or not. And when you deal with that type of stress and that type of turmoil for nine months, you didn't, you don't need to go to NA and you don't need to go to AA. Once you've looked the devil in the face and spent nine months in your darkest hour, you have that come to Jesus moment where you're like, I'm done. I'm not drinking anymore. I'm not partying anymore. I'm not doing any of that shit anymore. Like I quit everything. I quit drinking, caffeine, soda, candy, fast food. I quit everything like all at once. Um, so NA is great. AA is great. There's a lot of different ways that you could clean yourself up and turn your act around. Um, what worked for me was having a mental breakdown and almost fucking dying. I don't recommend waiting until you get to that point. If you have the opportunity to have an intervention or, uh, go to NA or go to AA, I would definitely suggest taking that route. Um, because almost dying is not fun. <sighs> um, Victoria Lynn says, Hey Tom, do you and Nova have any plans to have a baby in the near future? Uh, no, we don't. People ask me all the time. When are you and Nova going to get married? When are you and Nova going to have a baby? When, 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 And I like, I get it. A, 
The world could not fucking handle another Tom McDonald right now. The only thing worse than this Tom McDonald running around, running amok, would be a tiny little fucking Tom McDonald who doesn't know the rules yet, who's got a bad attitude. You don't want him running around right now, trust me. So I'm doing you a favor by not having a baby right now. Here's the other thing. I spent the first like 27 years of my life trying to make it. Trying to make it as a pro wrestler, trying to make it as a musician, trying to quote unquote make it in one shape or form, one way or another. I spent most of my life dirt poor, relying on my friends and family. I've been homeless. I've been addicted to drugs and alcohol. I've spent the majority of my life completely fucking it up. So at this point in time, where I've just finally reached a place in my life where I'm comfortable with who I am, I'm, I'm having success in music, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I need to take this time for me to enjoy what I'm doing. Then that's just me being selfish. At this point in time, I have to be selfish to enjoy the fruits of my labor and I have to just enjoy the first chapter of my life that hasn't been just entirely fucked up by yours truly. So I don't want to be responsible for another tiny person right now, let alone be responsible for a tiny Tom McDonald. Tiny Tom McDonald has a really sick ring to it, but I don't want to deal with that. And the world don't want to deal with that either. So for now, no babies. I'm just going to keep doing me. <sighs> Destiny Spencer says, can you autograph all the stuff that I buy off your website um, and have Nova sign them as well? No, I can't because um, I only autograph the albums. And like right now, it takes me... This last load of albums took me 11 days. It took me like three or four days to autograph every single album. And then it took me like another five or six days to pack and label every single album and put them in boxes and deliver them to the post office. 11 days. That's 11 days that I wasn't recording music. It's 11 days that I wasn't shooting music videos. It's 11 days. I lost 11 days. Um, and if I was doing t-shirts and the sweatpants and the mugs and blah, 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 everything else, I simply would not have time at this point to be a musician. I would just be selling merch and I just, I can't do that. So for now, it's just all of the albums. The CDs are autographed and you can go to www.hangovergang.com to get one. The link is pinned in the comments. Anthony Powelson says, what are your thoughts uh, on cancel culture going after Eminem. I mean, what's, okay. I guess the funny thing is, is like, why is cancel culture going off, going after Eminem now? Like, this is the, this is the point in time that, that you guys are deciding that you're going to go after Eminem. Like, what has Eminem done in the last five, ten years that that's offensive? All these, like, l little Generation Z kids and, like, millennials and stuff that are listening to Eminem now, and they're just, like, so aghast and, like, wildly offensive. It's like, yo, I listened to Eminem in 2001 when he was rapping about, like, raping his mom and sticking nails in her ears. Like, and what, so what do you have to be offended by you don't even know Eminem like the rest of us know Eminem. So anyway, I, I, cancel culture going after Eminem. It's the same thing as cancel culture going after Pepe Le Pew. It's the same thing as cancel culture going after Dr. Seuss or Mr. Potato Head or whatever the fuck it is that these idiots are trying to cancel. Like, it's fucking moronic. Like, just like, I wish they'd just cancel themselves and just fuck off. Like, it's crazy. Like, the only people who are going to allow you to cancel them are the people that accept your word as gospel. The only people who are going to allow you to cancel them are the people that submit to that type of thing. 
Because like, yo, if you say something offensive in a song or in art or something and the cancel culture community says, you're canceled, you're canceled and we're not listening to you anymore, you're canceled. Literally, all you have to do is say, no, I'm not. Fuck off. And it's done. So, I mean, I don't really, you know, as, as disheartened as people are with some of Eminem's new music and shit, I just don't ever see Eminem as being the type of guy who's going to bow down to that, 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 that type of bullshit on the internet. And then, like, he responded with the tone deaf track, which, like, I didn't really think was, like, a super crazy response, but it was a dope record, and, like, it, it fucking was what it was. So, um, you know, if, fuck cancel culture. Eminem, Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Seuss, Pepe Le Pew are always going to hold a special place in my heart. You know what's the fucking craziest thing about uh, about... Pepe Le Pew being canceled. If you guys don't know, Pepe Le Pew was that skunk from the 90s. He was like a cartoon skunk and he was always trying to like uh, get this female skunk to like uh, fall in love with them essentially. And he tried all sorts of like wacky different ways to get the female skunk to fall in love with them. And like cancel culture says, oh, Pepe Le Pew, he's promoting rape culture. Like blah, 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 blah. It's, I don't ever... Okay, look. I don't ever remember Pepe Le Pew getting the fucking girl, do you? I remember Pepe Le Pew every time he tried to get the girl and he hatched one of his wild, crazy, zany-ass plans to get the girl. The plan always backfired and fucked him up. So if anything, Pepe Le Pew is like showing you, hey, you shouldn't try to rape someone because it will be bad for you. Like, that's the message I get from Pepe Le Pew. He was, he was never successful in any of his wild plans. They always backfired and fucked him up. That seems like a good message to me. I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. Kevin Hammer Jr. says, When are you putting out a new album? Hashtag best rapper ever. What do you plan to name the next album? Um, typically... I'm just going to say this. Typically, my solo albums come out in August. I might release it sooner than August. And I'm definitely going to be releasing other albums before my solo album. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. There will be a new album dropping way sooner than you think. Seriously, way sooner than you think. Like, I know what you're probably thinking right now. It's way sooner than that. But my solo album, I'm still working on it. That's the one with uh, Fake Woke and Clown World and Cancelled and Best Rapper Ever and, and blah, 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 blah. I'm working on that album right now. But there's other albums coming. Other special secret, top secret projects I've been working on. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'm just flipping through you guys' questions right now. I'm going to answer more in a momente, but I got a new video dropping on Friday at 9 a.m. So I just have to tell you guys that one more time because it's what I do. I take questions. I talk about the, the I talk about the new video dropping on Friday. Um, that's what I do. I got a new video dropping on Friday. Um, I got the artwork for said video dropping tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, and as you guys already know, I've, I've ranted about it for weeks. This is a completely new style of music for me. This is something completely different than what you guys are used to. Um, it is something that I've wanted to do for a long time that I haven't done for fear of uh, people not embracing it and people not liking it and people just hating it. So I just continued and continued and continued to do um, to rap and, and make my songs like I have been doing, which I do love. 
but um, there, I have more in me than, than, than controversial rap songs. And this Friday, I'm giving you the first taste of something completely new for me. We're only doing it for three weeks. I'm only doing something different for three weeks. And then I'm going back to, 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 to what you guys love from me and what you expect from me. And I'm going back to what I've been doing. But for the next three weeks, it's going to be different. Um, so that video drops Friday, 9 a.m. The artwork drops tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you want to see that video before anybody else, join the Hangover Gang newsletter or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Links to all of those things are pinned in the comments right now. All you got to do is click the link to join the Hangover Gang newsletter. Put in your email and you're done. All you got to do is click the link and hit OK to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I would super appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel because we're almost at 2 million subs. Look, I'm getting ready for a week of telling you guys, check out the new video, share the new video, post it everywhere, blah, 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 blah. So I don't want to beat it to death right now. But I have to tell you guys, um, I'm really going to need y'all's help to get this new video out there. Like, I am worried because it's a new genre for me. It's not what you guys are used to. I'm worried that people are just going to reject it and not post it and not share it and not listen to it. And um, if you're here right now, please, when this video drops on Friday... Share it and post it everywhere. You guys know about how YouTube's treated my stuff in the past. You guys know that they don't notify you when you, when my videos drop. You guys know that they ban people um, for posting my stuff um, or have in the past. So I think all of those things compound and then help suppress my videos. We've done a lot of controversial stuff in the past, so they don't necessarily make everything I release accessible to people. And the only way that we can make it accessible to people is if we allow them to access it. So please, when this video drops on Friday, share it like crazy people. Put it in your stories, put it on your Facebooks, put it on your Instagrams, put it on your Twitters, dance to it on TikTok, do everything that you possibly can. I'm terrified that because this is a new genre for me that it's not gonna do well, please, Please don't let me disappoint, be disappointed on this one. It's important. So just uh, share the video like crazy when it comes out this Friday, 9 a.m. Artwork drops tomorrow. Join the Hangover Gang newsletter. Subscribe to YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to jump back in the comments right now and take some more questions. Um... Oh, Tyler Corman says, what's in the cup? It feels like the elephant in the room at this point. This is decaf coffee because I don't drink uh, regular coffee anymore. Um, dude, like I'm the type of person like this is like why I can't ever like do drugs. Like you're never going to see me like doing coke or like doing heroin or doing some drugs because like I'm the type of person like <clears throat> I'm so like cerebral and like my body is physically like so sensitive to shit. It's like these days, since I quit drinking and quit partying and, you know, I, 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 I'm relatively like a, a pretty clean living person. It's like these days, if I drink a half a cup of coffee, I might as well have fucking smoked meth. Cause like a half a cup of coffee will hit me like a fucking caffeine train. Like I'll be running around the house, fucking tweeting in one hand, mopping the floor with the fucking other hand. No will be chasing me around, braiding my hair. Like, I move a million miles an hour when I start drinking coffee. Like, I just fucking can't do it. So, I have decaf coffee in this, in this cup. This is the cup that my mom got me for Christmas. I wish you were fluent in shutting the fuck up. And in, in, in this cup that says, fuck you and your feelings, I have water. And I was this many years old when I realized that both of my favorite cups say fuck on them. This was 100% unplanned. I just grabbed this favorite cup for my decaf coffee and then I grabbed this favorite cup for my water. And I just realized that these are both really aggressive mugs to be drinking from. I mean... 
This is me, though. This is all me. <sighs> okay. I'm going to flip through some questions here. Um... Uh, Austin Lowry says, how do you write songs with other artists? How does the process work? I typically don't really write songs with other artists um, because I have my process that I enjoy and that's what works for me. Um, so, I mean, you'll see that like in the last like literally three years, I've done like two features. That's it. I don't really like making music with other people. I like to do my own thing. I'm a loner. I like to make music and do my thing. And that's pretty much it. So um, I wouldn't know what that process is because I've never really engaged in it. Um... I'm just flipping through the uh, comments here, looking for questions. Samantha Wilson says, uh, have you seen the beer can on my butt cheek? I got him to remind me why I don't drink, which is a reference to my song, I Don't Drink, when I talked about having a beer can, a smiling beer can tattoo on my butt cheek. Um, I'm not sure if Samantha Wilson is who I'm thinking of, but like a few months ago, I saw somebody tag me in a photo on Instagram and two girls had both gone out and got the smiling beer can tattoo, uh, tattooed on their butts. So Sam, if you're one of those people, I saw it on Instagram. You guys tagged me in the photo. Uh, great fucking work. <laughs> Uh, Lindsay Sparrow. This is actually the third time somebody's asked this. Lindsay says, will there be new merch for, uh, or new music coming out? F will there be new merch for the new music coming out on Friday? Absolutely. There, there will be a, a, a few new t-shirts. I try to do that. Whenever we drop like a big song, something that I'm like super stoked for, I always try to do like a couple little t-shirts for it. So that's the thing. If you're subscribed to the Hangover Gang newsletter, which I've asked you to do many times, um, and if you've been subscribed, you will know that when I drop a video on Friday, the MailChimp goes out and the newsletter goes out and you, and you get the early link to the video. And then a day later, you get first access to the merch that associates with the video. So, um, so yes, there will be merch uh, coming out um, in, in a coalition with this music video and I'm super excited for it. Thank you for asking. It gave me a great opportunity to promo www.hangovergang.com. So thank you. Um, yo. A couple people have now asked who keeps sending me these friend requests and what are all these contests going on? Dude, it's like I can't escape this shit. I, I've addressed this many times and I'll address it again right now. If you have a Tom McDonald sending you a friend request, it's not me. If you have a Tom McDonald telling you that you won a prize, it's not me. If you have a Tom McDonald telling you that you're the winner of a contest. It's not me. I don't have, if, if you get a message from somebody named Hangover Gang or Tom McDonald or Special Prize or whatever, those people aren't me, okay? I have one Facebook page. It's this Facebook page that we're live on right now. If I respond to your comment on the page, which I do a lot of the time, you'll see a blue check mark next to my name. That means I'm verified. Everybody else is a scammer. Like, oh, these are, these are, these are scam artists from Nigeria using computers that still accept a floppy disks to scam you of your credit card information. I have people emailing me all the time saying, hey, I sent you my credit card information so you can send me my 20 grand and you took $500 out of my account. No, the fuck, I didn't. 
No offense. No offense, but I don't need $500 from your bank account, okay? I have many $500 of my own. I don't need your $500. I, I don't need your credit card information. I don't need your address. I don't need your billing info. I don't need your full name. I don't need all of this shit, okay? Ugh. I keep saying this to people and it's just not getting through. It's 2021. People have been scamming other people on the internet for like 15 fucking years at this point. Everybody knows about internet scams. Why are you still getting scammed on the fucking internet, man? Everybody knows this bullshit. Even if the real Tom McDonald hits you up. If I call you on FaceTime and you see my face and you see my lips moving and I'm talking to you and I've called you on your personal phone and you know a million percent, a billion percent, this is Tom McDonald, he's talking to me on the phone right now, I can see his face, and I ask you for your credit card information, don't fucking give it to me. As a general rule, don't give anybody your credit card information ever, period. Especially on fucking Facebook. You're just, you're, 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 you're asking to get your life fucked up at that point. So this is what I'm going to ask you guys to do. Every time one of these fake Tom McDonald profiles, uh, comments on my page, I spend like 30 seconds going to their page, blocking their page, banning them from our page, blah, 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 blah. So they can never come back, but they just keep making more profiles and they change the punctuation in the name and they change the capital letters. So there's just like infinite amounts of profiles that they can make. If you guys see these fake profiles popping up on the page, you don't have to message me and say, hey, there's people scamming your fans. You don't have to message me and say, hey, I think you should see this. This is what's happening. I see it. I know what's happening. I'm blocking and banning them from this page at an ungodly rate. But I can only do so much. So if you see these people commenting, report them. Click the little three dots, report their page, block them, whatever you, whatever you can do, report them to Facebook and hopefully Facebook will do something to ban these profiles. They're probably here in this live stream right now. There is somebody in this live stream right now who on Wednesdays sends out emails claiming he's a Nigerian prince and he needs somewhere to store his million dollars. And on Sunday, he pretends to be Tom McDonald on this page. He's in here right now. And Mr. Nigerian Prince, Mr. Tom McDonald Prize, Mr. Special Gift, I would just like to say from me to you, from the bottom of my heart, fuck you, you stupid motherfucker. Okay, so that's, that's all I can do. I can tell this guy he's a stupid motherfucker and I can give him the finger and I can block him and ban him from my page and what you can do is report them and not give them your credit card information. Cool. Uh, Leslie Conklin says, how in the hell do you get these videos done so fast? Um, well, it's, it's, it's quite simple, really. I don't do anything else other than work. That's really it. And I force Nova to work inhuman hours on a constant basis. The only time I stop working in a day is to eat food or take a shit, that's it, or sleep. And, and, and there's times where like weeks on end, I only sleep four or five hours a night because I'm up early, I work out, and then I get in here and I work. I'm recording music or I'm making beats or I'm conceptualizing music videos or I'm planning and scheduling things or I'm designing merch or I'm writing uh, my, my the newsletter to send out to you guys on Friday or I'm packing albums or I'm autographing albums or uh, I'm designing artwork or it's just like literally endless. And you guys know that like I'm an independent artist. The only person I have on my team is my girlfriend, Nova. Like I write the songs, I make the beats, she shoots the videos, she edits the videos, we design the merch, we design the single artwork, we autograph the albums, we pack the albums, we blah, 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 everything. So there's not a lot of hours in the day for anything else. And luckily for me, I love what I do. 
for And you guys will see, like I get on here sometimes and I got these crazy bags under my eyes and I look tired and I look beat up and people say, man, can you please take a break? Just go relax for a minute, chill out, go do something for yourself. That's the problem. There's no extracurricular activity. There's no recreational thing. There's no vacation that I can take that I enjoy as much as I enjoy working extremely hard on what I love. So I'm just stuck working like a madman all the time because it's what I love to do. And um, if there's one thing I'm not afraid of, it's fucking hard work. And, and I commit myself fully to the things that I love. And it's a, it's a really exhausting combination, but it's also a winning combination or has been a winning combination for me. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Kristen Bear says, can you please shout out my daughter, Grace, for her sixth birthday, please? Happy sixth birthday, Grace. I hope it's a good one. I hope it kicks as much butt as you do. Uh, lots of love from me, Nova, and the hangover gang, 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 gang. Happy birthday, Grace. Uh, what else we got going on here? Jordan Archie says, do you believe, do you believe yourself that you are one of a kind and no one comes close to you? Jordan, this just reminded me of this experience that I had when I was about like 16 years old. So Jordan says, Jordan says, do you believe that you are one of a kind and no one comes close to you? I remember when I was 16, another rapper hit me up and asked me that same thing. He said, yo, Tom, what's up? And I was like, yo, what up? And we talked for a minute. And then he said, do you think they, that, they, that you're special? Do you think that you're the best rapper? And I was like, well, I feel like if you're going to be successful at anything, whether it's a rapper or a carpenter or a lawyer or a doctor or a plumber or a teacher or a nurse. I feel like if you want to be the best at anything, you have to believe that you're the best at it. A lot of this shit, a lot of life is all about belief and self-confidence and having a, a delusional endorsement in one's own self. Um, so that's what I said. I said, yeah, of course I think I'm the best. I think that's the type of attitude you got to have, um, you know, to get, to get where we want to go. And then he messaged me back and said, well, guess what? You're not one of the best. You're not even in the top 10 in this city. You're a fucking nobody. Your raps are trash. And guess what? That was like 15 years ago. I talked to somebody on the phone the other day who's friends with that guy. And I asked him, yo, How's so-and-so doing? And he's like, oh, he, he's a drywaller now. Sometimes he freestyles at like parties and shit, but that's it. So that guy who told me that I'm trash is a fucking drywaller. And I'm the fucking biggest independent rapper in North America. Fuck you, motherfucker. That's amazing. Fuck that guy. Man, I want to punch that guy in the head. I guess, I guess I, this is the greatest revenge ever, though. Like, I blew up. He's a fucking loser. It's pretty great. Um, and it's just a disclaimer. There's nothing wrong with a good old drywaller, okay? I did drywall when I was a kid. I was a carpenter for a long time. I was also a heavy-duty mechanic for a long time. Nothing wrong with a good old labor position. Nothing at all. There is something wrong with a kid who was, who was a, a peer of mine in the rap game. There's something wrong with a peer of mine telling me that I'm trash and then he ends up swinging a hammer all day and I end up the king of the fucking world. That's, that's where I draw the line. Fuck that guy. Um, so, Jordan, I don't know if you're going to follow this question up with you suck, you're trash, blah, 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 like that retard did, but... Do I believe in myself that I'm one of a kind and no one comes close to me? Abso-motherfucking-lutely. 
there's something to be said uh, for, for being humble and being respectful. And there's also something to be said for knowing your worth and knowing what you're capable of and knowing uh, what your potential is and living up to that potential. And yes, I think I'm something special um, and I think no one comes close to me. That, that's it. And you have to feel that way. It's not like an egotistical, like, I'm the best rapper ever. Everybody else is trash, blah, 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 blah. It's not like that. You have to believe in yourself to a delusional degree to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Don't run around throwing it in people's faces and screaming at the top of your lungs that you're the best in the world. That shit's lame. Be humble, be respectful and, and, and be yourself. But like, you can't censor your own belief in yourself to make other people feel more comfortable. That shit's fucking dumb. You're never gonna get anywhere doing that. If your confidence in yourself makes other people feel uh, uncomfortable, that's their fucking problem, not yours. You do you, you're the best at whatever it is you decide that you wanna do, you're the best. Even if you're not the best, you better think that you're the fucking best. If you put a plant in a glass box, that plant's only going to grow to fill the box, okay? If you put a plant in the forest, and that plant will grow fucking huge. You can't place limits on yourself. Even if you know somewhere deep down inside that, that you're not the greatest, that you're not God's gift, you're not the greatest thing since sliced bread, you better find a way to believe that about yourself, that's the difference between growing up in a glass box and growing up in the forest is the limits that we place on ourselves. <laughs> That's a secret to life right there. Okay, what other questions we got? Uh, Jazz Rain says, where did you get that Casper art in the back? Uh, there's that one with the, uh, with the frying pan and the, and the spaceship. And there's another one over there. It's Casper and gumballs falling through them. Uh, that is a uh, sort of like a graffiti artist, like an underground urban artist. And his name's Trouble Andrews. And uh, he does a lot of really incredible um, paintings and graffiti. And one of the things he does is does a lot of cool stuff with Casper. So, yeah, that's where those paintings are from. Um... Somebody mentioned that giant gummy bear up there. Nova actually got me that for Christmas and it's squishy. And if you squeeze it, a light turns on inside and it like glows, which is pretty rad. Uh, Wyatt Heim says, Tom, what do you think of your video that's dropping on Friday? I love it. I love the video that I'm going to drop on Friday. I don't release things unless I love them. And that's why it's scary for me to release this because it's something completely different. It's something completely new. We're hot off the heels of hundreds of thousands of new people finding us and coming here and hanging out with us from fake woke and clown world and stuff like that. Um, that's why it's scary because there's so many new eyes and I truly do love this music. Um, and I'm just... It scares me that I'm going to release something that I, that I love this much and then have people not embrace it. That's like the scariest part. As an artist, I think that's something that all artists deal with. Um, but I really love the video. I think it's crazy. It is going to punch you right in the face. It's going to kick you in the gut. It's going to light you on fire. And then it's going to spit on your ashes. Like it is, it is crazy. Um, and I'm very, very, very excited. I'm just also scared because it's, uh, because it's so radically different. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there's been like a few live streams that we've done um, over the last few months where I had hinted at, hey, I'm secretly working on some stuff right now that I can't tell you about that's a lot different than anything I've ever done before. Like I've been secretly working on this, this stuff for quite a while. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Brittany Denise Hanks says, do you think sobriety helped you to get where you're at? Uh, that's the dopest thing about you, in my opinion. Thank you, Brittany. Um, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. If it wasn't for, uh, 
if it wasn't for me uh, getting sober and figuring my life out, um, I don't even know where I'd be. I'd probably be in a ditch right now. I'd probably be dead, honestly. I'd probably be dead. So that was the crazy thing about the, the mental breakdown and the sort of psychological unraveling that I had. Um, it was A, the worst fucking thing that has ever happened to me in my life. But retrospectively, it ended up being the best fucking thing that ever happened to me in my life. Because if it wasn't for having a mental breakdown, if it wasn't for almost dying, if it wasn't for spending nine months as a recluse at my mother's house, um, I would have never figured myself out. I would have never got to know who I was underneath the alcohol and the partying and, and, and the bullshit. I would have never figured any of this shit out. I'd probably be dead. Um, so sometimes like you gotta walk through your dyke darkest hour. Oh shit. I almost said you walk through your dykest hour. Don't cancel me. Sometimes you have to walk through your darkest hour to, uh, you know, find the light. And I know it sounds corny and some like some wishy-washy bullshit, but that's really what it is. Sometimes like you got to look yourself in the fucking eye and figure out what you're made of. And while I was going through that, I figured out what I made, what I, what I'm made from. And, uh, that's led me to where we're at today. So, um, yes, sobriety is only part of it. Um, sobriety was a result of the mental breakdown and by translative properties. Yes. I think that being sober, um, uh, has helped me to get where I am now. Um, Marlena says, Tom, your new video drops 9 a.m. Friday. Is that East Coast time or West Coast time? That is West Coast time, Pacific time, 9 a.m. this Friday. Brand new video. Bring your sharing fingers with you. Get ready to share this video like friggin' crazy. New video Friday morning, 9 a.m. Completely different than anything I've ever done before. Join the Hangover Gang newsletter and subscribe to my gosh darn YouTube channel. Links are pinned in the comments. Um, when we're done here, please go click some of those links and take care of business for me. If we can break 2 million subs on YouTube, that'd be amazing. And if you join the Hangover Gang newsletter, uh, you'll get early access to the video. So do those two things. Tristan Markley says, can you tell my girlfriend of 14 years old, congratulations. We are huge fans and we just found out that we're going to have a baby hoping for a girl. Congratulations to Tristan and his girlfriend of 14 years. First of all, that's fucking crazy. I don't think, um, I think Nova, my girlfriend's the only person I've ever known for 14 years. So that's pretty crazy, but we've only been dating for like four or five, but we've just been ace homies for like the better part of our lives, which is nuts. Um, but congratulations to you guys. Congratulations on the baby. Uh, and I ha hope everything goes well. Uh, Jason Karas says, what song did you get the most hyped up or into while you were recording it or making it? Damn. That's a tough question. I think that when I get in the studio, I'm like pretty much all business. So I keep all those feelings kind of like suppressed. Um, the most excited or into like, there's just been like a couple of like the controversial songs, like fake woke and people so stupid and no lives matter and shit like that. Where like when I was like recording the song and saying some of the crazy shit I was saying, I would like be recording, rap a couple lines or whatever, and then stop. And I'd be like, Holy shit. <laughs> Did I just fucking say that? And are we actually going to do a video for this and put it out into the world? Like this is pretty fucking crazy. So there's been some times where like things felt a little surreal, but I told this story before, man. I think that the hypest I ever got about any song in my life was probably the first one, which was Dear Rappers. And just to give you guys the Reader's Digest, man, like Nova and I were living in the ghetto at the time and our house was falling apart around us and there's water leaking in through the ceiling and there was cockroaches in the house and mice in the house and ants in the house and like we're in the hood and the shit is just 
falling apart. We had no money. We couldn't pay rent. We could barely get groceries. Like it was fucked. Like there was a point in time where we couldn't pay the bills and our power got cut off and we had to take an extension cord and plug our fridge into an extension cord and then pitch the cord out the window, run it across our driveway into our neighbor's garage and plug it into his garage just so we could keep our food from going bad because they cut the power off. We lived by candlelight for like a week. No internet, no lights, no TV, no video games, nothing. And, and the only power we had was going to the fridge so our food didn't spoil. So at that point in time, dealing with all that shit and the house falling apart and blah, 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 no money, all this shit. I'm hot off a of mental breakdown. Things are not good. It's tough. It's, it's hard times. I walked out one day and I had half a cigarette left. And I walked out and I sat on my front porch and I smoked this half a cigarette and I started writing. And I had no idea what I was gonna write about. I sat down with no intentions. I didn't have an idea. I didn't have a plan, nothing. I just sat down feeling bummed out. The house was falling apart. We're broke. The fucking lights were cut off last week. Blah, 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 blah. I sit down on that front step on the front porch. I smoke this half a cigarette and I start writing. And by the time that cigarette was done being smoked, I had written in my phone, Dear Rappers. And I literally knew at that moment, that was the one that was going to change everything or had the potential to change everything. And I remember like I ran into the house, like almost having a panic attack because I finished writing this song and then I sat there and looked at my phone and I had this moment, I had like an epiphany and I was like, oh my God. I just wrote this song that's gonna change my fucking life. And I remember I just ran into the house freaking out, couldn't catch my breath, my heart's pounding. I'm like, Nova, 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 where are you, where are you, where are you? She comes out, I'm like, yo, I just wrote this song. It's the best thing I ever fucking did. It has real potential. I think it could change my life. Like this could be the one that, that takes us out of here and blah, 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 blah. I need you to shoot the video. She was like, okay, like, don't you need to record it? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna record it right now. And when I'm done recording it, we need to shoot the video. I literally sat down, recorded that song in the next, whatever, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it took. By the time I was done recording, Nova had her camera set up. She pulled the backdrop down. We only had one light, one light, because we couldn't afford real lights back then. We had one $30 light that we bought off of Amazon. Nova put a red gel over it and taped the red gel to the light to give it that red glow. And those were probably our last four fucking batteries in that light. I stood in front of that backdrop. Nova hit record on the camera. We shot that video, released it the next day. I literally went to five of my friends. I went to my homie Brandon. I went to my homie Dean. I went to my sister and I went to this guy that I met on the internet who wanted to invest in my music. I went to four people and I borrowed like three, $400 from a couple of them, $200 from a couple of them and a hundred dollars. When it was all said and done, I had a thousand dollars that I had borrowed from four people. I put all thousand dollars on a Facebook advertisement for dear rappers. I dropped it the next day and three days later it had a million views. And the rest is fucking history. Like, that was the hypest I ever got about any song ever. That's a true story, verbatim, 100% factual. It is literally like some meant to be shit. Like, just unfucking real. Sometimes, like, we're on a live stream right now and it's been pretty light and it's, and it's cool, but... More often than not, when I tell that story in interviews and stuff like that, I can't even get through it without crying because it just, it just is so crazy. It means so much to me. Um, and that's why I credit you guys. You guys, a lot of you guys found me through that video. If you didn't find me through that video directly, you found me from a video that built off the foundation that was Dear Rappers. 
So if it wasn't for that song, a lot of you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here. But you guys all found me and you found me at the lowest point in my life and you saved me. I mean, you really saved me. Like a lot of people will say that like, oh, my God, the best fans in the world and like, and my fans saved me and stuff. You guys really did save me. You found me in a fucking hole in the ground and you reached down and you grabbed me and you pulled me out and you've been carrying me and helping me when I fall down and, and encouraging me to keep going ever since. And I owe you guys the world for that. And I love you guys so much for that. And you guys mean so much to me because of those things. Um, that's another reason why, like, since just since while we're on the topic and we're talking about this stuff, that's another reason why it's difficult for me to release music like I'm releasing Friday, different music, music that I love, something that I want to do. Because I feel like the least I can do after everything you guys have done for me, the least I could do is give you guys exactly what you want musically. I feel like I'm indebted to you guys forever and I owe you at least that, at the very least. Um, so when I decide, okay, I'm not going to do another fake woke right now. I'm not going to do a clown world right now. I have to do this other stuff that I love doing. I feel a little bit guilty for it because I feel like I owe you guys everything that is exactly what you want. Um, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I feel like I owe you um, exactly what you want. And, and this Friday, this video I dropped... I don't know if it's exactly what you want. I don't know what it is. I know it's something that I loved creating. It's something that I loved doing and I can't wait to give it to you. And I, and I really do hope you guys enjoy it. But you know, it, that's another reason why it's just scary for me. I'm just flipping through the comments here. Edward Evans says, hey, Tom, the most important question is how are the pups doing? The pups are doing great, man. Uh, Naz is just laying here next to me on the floor. Um, I got my other dogs out in the house. They're probably sleeping or playing or I don't know what the fuck they're doing. But but all the dogs are great, man. Um, and I really appreciate you guys asking um, because, you know, last year when Naz died, like, I'm not a big crier. I don't cry a lot. Um, but when that dog died, I swear to God, I didn't have a dry eye for two weeks. It was fucking terrible. And then like, you guys know the story he died and then they brought him back to life. And then he was like in like an incubator for like a week and they were trying to save him and blah, 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 blah. And he made a full fucking, he made a full recovery. It's so crazy. Just like, look at this guy. You're such a handsome guy. I know he looks kind of like he looks kind of retarded right now, but he's not retarded. He made a full recovery. This dog that you're looking at right now, he was dead. And they brought him back to life. You don't even know how crazy you are, dude. You're amazing. Okay, I'm going to put you right there. You can sit on me. Um, so anyways, the dogs are good, man. Nass is good. Uh, my big dog, Steppenwolf, he's good. The other two little dogs, they're good. Everybody's good. I appreciate you. Thank you for asking. Uh, 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 uh. Um, Jade Silly says, what is the song that you're most... What was the song that you were most scared of releasing? Honestly, like, different songs have scared me for different reasons. I go through, I go through periods where I really don't give a fuck. I, I really don't care what the internet says, and I really don't give a shit what they think of my music. And I go through periods where I do kind of, like, care, and I'm like, uh... Maybe I should calm down on that a little bit, or maybe I should reword that and say it in a different way or whatever. Um, 
but I don't ever remember truly being scared of any of them. I always get to a point where I've justified the song. I've justified everything that I've said in the song in my own head. If somebody else wants to take the lyrics out of context and make them mean something else, go the fuck ahead. That's your fucking problem, not mine. I know what my intentions are. I know what my music means, and I'm just putting it out into the fucking world. Um, so, you know, there's definitely been a few that have made me nervous. Just wait. Like I said, I'm doing a, a little short three-week period of doing something completely different. Just wait till you hear what I come back with. When I move on from this crazy stuff that I'm doing for the next week, three weeks, when I, when, when I come back, I'm going to blow your friggin' mind. I'm going to be ma- I'm going to be releasing music that you're going to listen to and be like there was no way this guy wasn't terrified when he released this shit. Like I got some crazy stuff on the way for you guys. Um but first crazy thing I have in store is this Friday 9 a.m. brand new video. Dude, I can't fucking wait to show you this to you guys. It's like this weird mixture of being extremely apprehensive, worried, and scared, and extremely fucking jacked up and excited because I love it, and I just can't wait to show you guys what I've done. Um, So Friday, 9 a.m., new video. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'm dropping the artwork. So meet me here. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just flipping through your comments here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ooh, some people are asking some dicey questions that I can't even um I can't even answer. Ooh. Yeah, you're going to have to wait for the documentary for some of these questions to get answered. Um, Okay, what do we got going on here? Emily Marie Sargent says, Your song Buttholes is what turned me on to you. Thank you. I don't know if you guys have heard the song Buttholes. That was a really fun video to shoot and a really fun song to record. Mm -hmm. And I knew when I named it Buttholes that I was going to get all types of funny comments about from people using the name of the song. And like if you would have told me a year ago that I would be on a live stream and I'd read a comment that says your butthole is what turned me on to you, I wouldn't have fucking believed you. Yet, alas, here we are, 2021. 2021's weird. My butthole is turning people on to my music. I don't care what's turning people onto my music. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for it. Uh, Morgan Williams says that badass grill that you used in "I Hate Hip Hop." Why have you not used it since? That looks that grill looks so badass on you. Oh man, thank you, Morgan. I really appreciate that. Nobody's ever asked me about that grill. That's an opal grill. Like opal is like a stone, right? Like a like a multicolored like stone. It kind of changes color and light. Um, yeah, I just haven't worn it again. Um, I actually did wear it in Clown World, but I don't remember what scene in Clown World I wore it in, and I don't think that there was close-ups of it in Clown World, so you might have just not noticed. But I did wear it in Clown World. I do love that grill. It's one of my favorites. Um, next time I do a live stream, I'll wear it for you. How about that? Um, all right, guys, I don't know how long we've been here, but, um, like I said, I do work 24 hours a day and the work don't stop with this live stream tonight. I got a billion things that, that, that I have to do still this evening. And I've only, I worked out this morning. I ate a protein shake and I had a very small meal and that was like eight hours ago and I haven't eaten again. So I'm going to go eat and get back on the grind and work. So um, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Brand new music video this Friday at 9 a.m. Join the Hangover Gang newsletter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see the video first. 
Um, the links are in the comment section. Brand new video, Friday at 9 a.m. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm dropping the artwork, so meet me here tomorrow if you want to know what the song's called and get a little sneak peek at what it looks like. Man, this is going to be a wild freaking ride for the next week, uh, for the next three weeks. This is going to be an incredible uh, video on Friday. Um, like I said, it is different. It is wild. It is unlike anything I've ever done before. I cannot wait to experience these next three weeks with you guys. It's going to be a wild ride. I hope you decide to, to join me. I hope if you decide to join me that like you like what I'm playing through the stereo and you like what you see out the windows because I put a lot of work and time and energy into this stuff and I cannot wait to give it to you guys. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to put the links back in the comments again when this live stream ends. If you see my comment, give it a like. It'll push it further up in the feed and make it easier for other people to find. Join the Hangover Gang newsletter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can get autographed albums at hangovergang.com. Brand new video this Friday, 9 a.m. I love y'all. I know that we all wanted 2021 to be better than 2020. I think 2021 is still a little bit of a shit show. I hope... Anybody out there that is dealing with the wrath that has been the last two years is dealing with it gracefully and is enduring everything that this fucking crazy couple years decides to throw at them. I'm in your corner. There's no such thing as a white flag. Hangover gang does not fucking surrender. I am in those trenches right there with you. So let's just keep shooting and let's just keep pushing forward and let's just keep fighting and let's just continue making the best. Let's just continue making the best of what we have. Hangover Gang is more than a fan base. It's more than friends. It's more than strangers on the internet. Hangover Gang is a family and I love every single one of you guys. And you can't choose who you're related to. Blood and DNA does that. But you can choose who your family is, and I choose you guys. Be strong. Be smart. I'll see you guys Friday morning with a brand new video. I love y'all. It is the Hangover Gang forever and a day. Have a great evening. Peace.